those patients are going to be our patients one day or the next. So let's figure out how to get them the mammogram and the colonoscopy versus the chemotherapy. The World Health Organization calculates that at least 80% of all heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes, and up to 40% of cancer, could be prevented if people ate healthier, exercised, and stopped using tobacco. At over 60%, two-thirds of all human cancer can be prevented during a normal human lifespan. Our in incentives are aligned around intervention and care rather than prevention and treatment. We spend something, Bill, you can correct me if I'm wrong, something on the order of 1% of our health dollar, one, one cent of our health dollar on prevention. Clearly we're spending all of our dollars on, on treating all of these illnesses which I think is my job to prevent in the first place. My job and um, beyond the role of the family physician, the role of health policy. Prevention is the long-term return on investment for us. Everything else is just a patch. I, I think there's a, a larger role for prevention than just the medical system. I think churches need to be engaged in this. Schools need to be engaged. We have workshops called the Healthier Living Workshops, which were, st which were designed out in Stanford, teaching patients how to change their lifestyle. So there are these other systems that we can use. And what we found was that people that took the program changed their health behaviors. They're doing more exercise, they're communicating better with their physicians, they had better health status, they had less fatigue, they had less disability, they had less shortness of breath, and they had less utilization. According to the National Business Group on Health, employers are paying 100 percent more for health care today than in 2000. American businesses are investing in prevention and wellness initiatives as they see costs associated with obesity and smoking-related illness increase. I went to a lecture recently about all the new gadgets about how to treat lung cancer. And I was like, why are we doing this? What we need is to be able to, you know, get people to stop smoking. From what I am told uh, by healthcare providers uh, in the insurance industry, they traditionally have not funded prevention strategies because on the average people change insurance carriers quite frequently every two years or so and to pay for prevention which will be benefited later in life and the person changes insurance will not benefit that particular insurance company.